Welcome to the Connected Mom Podcast, where we have real conversations, helping you to connect more deeply with God, more empathically with your fellow moms, and more intentionally with your child. I'm Becky Harling, your host, and I have with me today my amazing co-host, Sarah Wildman. Hey, Sarah. Hello, Becky. So great to be here. Okay, so being a mom takes so much wisdom. I'm going to say that again. (laughs) It takes so much wisdom. I am in the beginning of the fall, like probably many moms. And the big thing right now is school decisions, right? The wisdom and how, how to school your child. I mean, it just feels like there can be thing after thing where we really need wisdom. So I love that we're talking about it today. I think it's going to apply to moms in a lot of stages of life. Yeah, I do too, Sarah. In fact, I was on the phone uh, just minutes ago with one of my daughters who was saying that they need wisdom because their little seven-year-old wants to do two sports this fall. And they are a family of five boys. And um, yeah, and she's like, (laughs) I don't know how we can keep up. Like, we maybe need to think this through. How many sports are enough? You know, and so it's the it's the decisions Mm -hmm. like that. It's the decisions like you said over school. It's decisions at times about churches and what to allow them to get involved in. It's just it does take so much wisdom. So I love that we're talking about this today too. Our guest today is Pam Farrell and Pam has been on the show before. I think the last time you were on Pam we were talking about marriage, but I think today so. We're talking about wisdom because you and some of your friends have written another creative Bible study called Discovering Wisdom in Proverbs. And I love that. I personally love the book of Proverbs because I feel like there's so much tucked in there. And man, women and mamas especially need wisdom in today's world really whether you're in the thick of raising kids or even if you're like you and I Pam where our kids are out of the house and we have grand you know we have grandkids now we still need wisdom we need wisdom mm-hmm. about how to interact with our adult kids how to interact with our grandkids so today we're talking about wisdom which is just incredible so many moms today when they need wisdom go to google In fact, one of my daughters said to me several years ago, mom, how in the world did you raise us without Google? And I realized like the world has changed so fast. Google wasn't a thing when you and I were raising our kids, Pam, right? And and so we need to go to somewhere else for wisdom. So Pam, talk to us about that a little bit. Where did you most often turn and tell us a little bit about the kids that you raised. Sure, sure. Yeah, I really believe that we should go to God for our wisdom. Um, Google may or may not be accurate, especially Google doesn't personally know and love you and your children. Um, so yes. God <laughs> loves you. God created you. God created your kids. So nobody's a better expert. Uh, that can give wisdom more than our creator God. So that's like step one in getting wisdom. Um, Even Proverbs says that God is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then mentors, people that, you know, know and love your kids, know and love you, know and love like your circumstances, maybe a part of your church or part of your life or someone in your family, Um, people you can trust that love Jesus too. They can help you find wisdom. And, you know, I needed wisdom a lot um, as a mom. Bill and I were, uh, Bill's a pastor, first a youth pastor, and then a lead pastor during the time we were raising our kids. And, you know, that's a whole nother dynamic right there. Uh, I needed wisdom on what is like a feral do, that's my last name. So, or, and what expectations would I have on my kids? whether or not their dad was the pastor. I didn't want to like load them up just because dad has a certain job. I wanted them to follow Jesus because, hey, that's what Jesus wants us to do is follow him. 
So we just need wisdom in the daily walking things out. And I had three boys. I have three boys and Brock, Zach and Caleb. And of course, all different personalities. And our middle son was a challenge. ADD, ADHD, our older two were both <laughs> strong willed. Um, God was gracious in our, my third born was like the easy go along, <laughs> um, like t- could take him anywhere. He'd take a nap. Everybody loved him. He had like beautiful they curly kind of hair. Have to be right. Yeah. Because yeah. at the when you're at the end of the line, you don't have a choice. You have right. to go along with everybody else. <laughs> so I needed wisdom. To help him find his giftedness, not be in the shadow of his older, strong-willed brothers. So, you know, we all Mm -hmm. need wisdom. And I needed wisdom as a mom, too, because I didn't have any girls. And as a leader, I needed God to teach me how to encourage and shepherd the young girls of our church. I kind of took them underneath my wing since I didn't have any daughters. I walked alongside other moms that had daughters and were feeling a bit overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. I, I want to ask you one follow-up question before we move off this topic, because you mentioned going to other, you know, women that know your family. And I agree with that. However, I have heard from some younger women, yeah, well, what if I, what do I do when somebody has a really strong opinion that there's only one way to school, you know, or there's only right. one way to do this. How do I handle that? So what would you tell women, younger women about that? You know, again, we can go to the word for our wisdom, a gentle answer turns away wrath. And so just be strong, but gentle thank them for their opinion, but you don't have to follow everybody's opinion. You know, really we're, we're, it's an audience of one. We need to please God more than anybody else. And so um, sometimes we'll have to sit down with people that are super strong in our life and say, I love you. I value you. If I don't follow every one of your recommendations, that doesn't mean I don't love you and value you, um, but I still do. And so uh, thank you for being a part of my life. And I appreciate my daughter, daughters-in-law, our first daughter-in-law. Um, she's su- super strong willed, um, in a good way. She's a vibrant leader. And, um, my, my oldest son, super strong leader. Like he won Arizona coach of the year. He's a great leader, you know? Um, And so they were wise enough that they took each set of grandparents out um, for coffee and talked to each one of us about the role that they would love to have us play in the lives of their children. And so we got to talk about boundaries. We got to talk about, you know, exactly what would be helpful to them, what would be helpful to each child. You know, so sometimes really just honest conversation goes a long way in helping everybody have the wisdom to know how to interact with each other. I I love that so much. And I I think, you know, I want to say to the moms that are listening, um, nobody knows your child as well as God. And after God, you as the parent know your child best. Right. So what's right for your friend's child as far as school might not be correct for your child. And so we, we, that's where we keep going back to God in prayer, you know, to find Mm -hmm. what his will is for your family. Exactly. And, you know, in, um, in my Bible study, uh, discovering wisdom in Proverbs, I do have, I share a couple of things about you know, finding God's will and finding wisdom. I have a a thing that I talk about called cupcake theology. So easy to remember, everybody loves cupcakes, right? So cupcake Mm -hmm. theology says if anybody um, needs wisdom, let them ask God and he'll give it liberally and generously. Um, And so picture God's wisdom is always sweet, like a cupcake, Mm -hmm. even if it's corrective. His goal is to give it in a kind way, like the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Um, And it is generous, like that 
thick, yummy frosting on top of a cupcake. And so you're making us hungry. I know, I know. (laughs) So next time you feed your kids or your grandkids cupcakes, just say, thanks, God, that that's how you give wisdom. You give wisdom Mm -hmm. that's sweet and generous. And so that's step one is if we have a question, like take it to God because he promises he's going to give us wisdom. And um, then I have four simple steps uh, to find God's will. I call them the four C's. And the first one is seek good counsel. And that's what we talked about, the Bible. Many plans are in the heart, uh, in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord will stand, says Proverbs. And then, so go to God's word. And second, go to people who love God's word. Uh, In an abundance of counselors, there is victory, says Proverbs 11. So that's step one is good counsel. Step two is listen to the Spirit's conviction. Um, The Holy Spirit will guide us and lead us uh, in, in the way we should go. And when we step out into something that is God's will, we're going to see the fruit of the Spirit then. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness as we step out. And then ask for confirmation. And I always love this, you know, in the Bible, we get this, um, you know, I'm going to lay a fleece down. And Mm -hmm. I I think that God is kind. He, he knows when we're not testing him, but like, we're trying to hear loud and clear, God, please give me a neon sign. And so (laughs) he will, when we ask him, please give me a verse, please give me like, let me hear something in church today. Um, He will do that. He'll give you a confirmation, maybe by a friend's conversation over coffee. Um, So that is the third C of finding God's will. And then the last one is circumstances. Eventually the circumstances are going to line up. And, you know, sometimes we knock and we knock, we knock on a door and God holds that door closed So we develop the character that we'll need for when he opens the door and then we walk through it. But eventually, if it's God's will, he's going to line up those circumstances as well. That's really helpful. Really helpful. So some of our moms, of course, know all about the book of Proverbs. They're like, oh, I have my favorite verse. And then there might be some moms that are listening that really aren't familiar with Proverbs. So would you step back for just a second? Give us a broad brush on what the book of Proverbs is and maybe uh, why you guys decided to tackle it in this book. Right. Jean, Jean Jones and my, um, is the person in, that does the deep dive Bible study. I write the devotions that are inside of discovering wisdom in Proverbs. And then my friend Carla uh, Dornicker, she does the art. And so cool. we kind of have a right, left brain view yeah. of the Proverbs so that you can creatively learn. And you can also, if you're an intellectual, you can dig deep and learn as well. And um, the Proverbs, I think I love about the Proverbs and uh, Becky and I were talking right before the show is, you know, you can read one proverb a day because there's 31 of them. Mm -hmm. And it's like a nugget of goodness and wisdom for that day. And you can repeat that over and over and over again every month. It's like a it's a great thing to do as a family to just keep the Bible in your car and have one of the kids read one of the Proverbs on the way to school. And the Proverbs, um, they tend to be written kind of like um, sayings that you can remember because, you know, Mm -hmm. they're written so that they can give wisdom um, as you pass in a flash. Uh, So you can grab and go. That's the way the Proverbs are written, usually in groups of one or two, or sometimes it's a theme um, like Proverbs 2, all about the word of God and what you can find in the word of God. And some of the other Proverbs, it's all about like avoid evil people. Some of the other Proverbs are focused on, hey, if you walk righteous, I'm going to bless you and all different verses all the way through. So I I think they're easy to approach. That's why I love them Mm -hmm. for moms, because you can just Mm -hmm. grab like two sentences and it can be your theme for the day. You know, there's so many practical verses too in Proverbs. Like I I was just thinking as you were talking, there are so many practical verses for your kids, even about friendship, you know, and, Mm -hmm. and practical 
tips on all kinds of relationships. I mean, there's the one like, don't bless your neighbor with a loud voice in the morning. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's just right. good people skills, right? I mean, sometimes I forget that mm-hmm. because Steve, my husband, is more of a night person. I'm more of a morning person. So I can bounce out of bed and say, good morning. And he's like <laughs> not really ready for that, you know. And I have to think of Proverbs, you know, where it gives good counsel on people skills. It, it talks about, you know, there's a friend that li- loves closer than a brother. There's just a, a friend loves at all times. There's just really good people skills for your kids and for you as a mom, I think. It's true. Um, And they're easy to remember too. When like the theme verse for discovering wisdom in Proverbs is Proverbs 13, 20, walk with the wise and you'll become wise. I mean, it's like, why should I listen to Becky's podcast? Because she's wise. And if I walk with her, (laughs) I'm going to become wise like Becky. And you know, that is just so practical to think as a mom, okay, who are my wisest friends? I want to spend more time with them this year. Who are my wisest mentors? How can I weave in listening to those podcasts, reading those books? And so there's, it's super practical that Proverbs are super Mm -hmm. practical. Yeah. Now, this is the fifth, this this book, Discovering Wisdom in the Proverbs, in a creative series of Bible studies. And I want you to talk to us about that a little bit because, you know, some of our mamas are listening and they're thinking, oh man, I don't have time for another Bible study. <laughs> what makes this different? What The feedback that we're getting, um, and it was one of our goals, is to have a Bible study that's approachable even if you're not like an intellect, like, so you want to learn the deep things of God, but maybe you're a creative. Um, That's a little bit how I'm wired. Um, I like to do Bible art. I call it more like Bible doodling because I'm not like a great artist, but doodling helps me remember what's in that verse. Mm -hmm. And so Carla, she created these beautiful coloring pages. You can Xerox them and do them with your kids. A lot of homeschool families use them. A lot of families take our Bible study on vacation and then all the kids and grandkids will color the same verse. And that's like the theme verse for the day. And um, here's like a cool thing. Uh, The Bible uh, in Genesis says, in the beginning, God created. First five words of the Mm -hmm. Bible. So God's a creator God. So God can create answers. God can create solutions. God can create a way forward. And because um, he's made, like he's creative, I think that when he says we're made in his image, he put a piece of creativity in each one of us. Now, some of us are more creative than others. I'll give you that. Um, But here's a fun thing that um, the way we're wired, our problems are located on one side of our brain and our creativity is located on another side of our brain. So when you're being creative, whether you're painting or dancing or coloring in a color book with your grandkids, um, you can't think of your problems. They're blocked out. I love that. Creativity blocks it (laughs) out. I'm like, yay, rescue me. I want to do something creative. So it's a really great way uh, to deal with depression even. You know, the Proverbs are so quick and easy that even somebody who's struggling emotionally can grab hold of a sentence. And then Mm -hmm. you add the creative element and it boosts your mood as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think you talked about this yet, but in your devo- your book, there's simple skills that you say that we can apply to our lives. So are there a few that you would say are particularly helpful for moms that might be listening? Yeah, we, we do. We've been, Bill and I have taught simple skills for success um, all through our ministry. And so I thought, well, that's a perfect thing to focus my devotionals on in uh, discovering wisdom in Proverbs. And it can be, there's some some simple tests that you can give um, to help you know whether this is the way God wants you to walk. Walk in a manner worthy of your calling is, you know, Mm. what we're encouraged to do. And um, so one of them is, is this so obvious that I'm wasting time? Like, Yes, I should get out of bed. Yes, I should get dressed. Yes, I should brush my teeth. And I should encourage my children to take a shower too. You know, so some things are so obvious that you just do them. Then there's a few other things you can pre-decide. 
Uh, for example, you can pre-decide answers ahead of time with your husband that you know after church, can I go to Susie's house? Can Jimmy come over? Like, you know, you're, you're going to get certain questions always. Uh, and so pre-decide what answer you're going to give that day. Um, you can pre-decide simple things like lattes. I'm going to get the same kind so I don't have to think anymore. Dr. Oz, um, you know, he's like a famous surgeon, a TV, yep. you know, doctor. And he has the same two breakfasts. There's only two breakfasts because he found out there, these are the things that fuel me all day as a surgeon. One is um, steel cut oatmeal with blueberries and the other one is fresh yogurt with berries and nuts. And so he's, he pre-decided like, I'm not going to mess around with what I eat for breakfast. Mm. And even, mm -hmm. you know, Steve Jobs, that same black T-shirt, you know, that we always saw him and he just pre-decided his uniform for work. So there's mm -hmm. things that we can pre-decide to lower the stress, you know, because um, studies say we have between five and 6,000 decisions per day, per day. That's a yeah, lot I believe of that. <laughs> and wow. so... Um, if we can pre-decide some of them, it'll lower our stress. A third easy one is, would I give this advice that I am going to take myself to my best friend? Mm. Like, am I treating myself like God's best friend in the way that I'm talking mm. to myself, in the path that I'm choosing? Would, would this mm. be something I would recommend to my kids or my grandkids? So you can spin any question that's about you and push it out and say, would I give this advice? Is this good advice to the people that I love? So those are mm -hmm. simple things that you can do um, for simple skills for success. Little harder ones. I do have a worksheet. Um, it's called, should I stay or should I go? Um, and it is when you're deciding between two really good choices and they're both mm -hmm. could be God's will. They're both, you know, honorable decisions. Then how do you decide? You know, a lot of people will make a pro and con list and they'll just like whatever's longest, that's the way I'm going to mm -hmm. go. But longest quantity does not replace quality. So instead we encourage you to make that pro and con list and then go back and mark the priorities, A, B, and C. Remove all the C's, look at the B's and then compare the A's and hmm. see which direction God wants you to go comparing the A's to the A's because God wants us to live with our A priorities being the top um, things that we think about when we make those tough decisions about whether what school our child should go to or where if we should change jobs, whether we should move, et cetera. Um, and a simple example in our life was um, when we decided whether to move and care give, like how are we going to care give Bill's parents? They're getting older. They need help. And so mm -hmm. the first time we went through and made the pro con list, there were things like um, make an apartment in our house. Well, mom's agoraphobic and a hoarder. She's not going to move anywhere. Um, then, oh, m move and like move up next to them. And well, they didn't really need us full time yet. And so we said, you know, we're just going to push pause and we'll revisit this in a year. Well, in that year, Bill's dad's um, health went down. We knew we needed to move. But my husband was wise enough that he said, this is a big ask. You know, my mom is agoraphobic. So she's a hoarder. She's volatile. Not an easy person to be around. And I'm asking my wife to give up everything and move up to help care give for her. But Pam is like half mermaid. She loves the water. The beach is only 20 <laughs> minutes away. What if we like downsize because we're thinking about doing that anyway and move on to a boat? And when Bill uh, shared that option with me, it took me like two seconds. Yes, that sounds great. Hashtag <laughs> crazy fun midlife adventure. And so he was wise enough to pray when you need wisdom. Mm -hmm. And then God gave that creative win-win uh, as our next step in life. I love Good that. Example. So Pam, I'm guessing that you had 
uh, you and Bill had some key verses you went back to when you were raising your kids. So what were your fa- what are some of your favorite verses in Proverbs? And are there any that you returned to a lot when you were raising your boys? Yeah, well, one of them is what our ministry is named after. Our ministry is Love Wise, and we like to say we park ourselves on the corner of God's love and God's wisdom. And Proverbs 19, 8 says, if um, those who gain wisdom love life. And so yes. that became a priority. We all want to love our life. Okay, how do we get wisdom into our kids' lives? And so I kind of focused on the the verses that connect integrity to blessing with my kids. And I I have this notebook that um, it's black. My friend Lisa Sarunga sells them. And yeah. she was um, you know a victim of sexual violence. And she mm-hmm. studied God's word and wrote in white pen in a black notebook to write her way to light again out of darkness. Mm, and I just wow. like, that is so cool. So that's where I keep my verses um, that I want to remind my kids and my grandkids, like blessings are on the head of the righteous Proverbs 10, 6. Whoever walks in integrity, walks securely. Proverbs um, 13, 9. Whoever heeds instruction is on the path to life. Proverbs 10. So I I just kept those verses about integrity in front of my kids at all times. And that mm-hmm. was kind of mm-hmm. our, um, we did have a family motto. It wasn't out of a Proverbs, but um, it's out of First Samuel, those who honor God, God honors. And so mm. before they left the house, I would say those who honor God, and they would repeat back, God honors. And that's how they made their decisions. What would honor God? We taught them to check in with their GPS. Does this uh, decision show honor to G God, P people, S self? And if you've got Mm -hmm. a green light on that GPS, then that's the direction to head. Mm. Mm. So good. So what would you say are one or two must memorize verses for moms? Oh, wow. From Proverbs. Uh, From Proverbs. One or two. I I won't say the whole Bible. (laughs) I know. (laughs) From Proverbs. (laughs) Yeah, one or two. Um, This is one that is sweet that I love as a mom. Um, It's Proverbs 11, 25. A generous woman will prosper. She who refreshes Mm -hmm. others will herself be refreshed. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we moms, we're like, we feel so wrung out, but Verses like that remind us that God sees us, God knows us, and that if we pour out, God will pour in and he'll like tell us what will be refreshing to us. Like, hey, it's okay to sit down with your Bible right now and a tall glass of iced tea and take 10. Um, So he'll nurture us. Um, So that's that's one of my favorite. In fact, there's a lot of verses about generosity in Proverbs. Mm-hmm. So just having mm-hmm. a generous heart um, towards your kids, towards your family, um, towards your parents, towards the church. Um, God really honors that. Be generous and you will prosper. Help others and you will be helped. Um, mm-hmm. So th- those are fun ones. But I, I have to say Proverbs 31 don't you don't really? have to memorize the whole <laughs> chapter, but Proverbs 31 is definitely one of my favorite. And I think it's because it, it promises that if we, you know, walk in wisdom and the Proverbs 31 woman, I love her because when you read through Proverbs 31, um, every one of the verses has a verb in it. She's a woman of action. She rises, mm-hmm. she sells, she makes, mm-hmm. she cooks, she gives. So it's they're all action. And I, I personally like that, that it, there's a blessing in being a woman of action. And um, mm-hmm. the blessing is that her husband will be known at the gate. So that's a good thing. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll do well, maybe get a raise, maybe do well in his job, maybe just be happy in the home and be helpful in the home. Uh, and then your children will rise up and bless you. And I'm like, I lived for that. I lived for that mm-hmm. day, you know, because some mm-hmm. days you get that small blessing of, you know, mom, I picked this flower for you. And then mm-hmm. other days, 
your um, married son calls on Mother's Day and said, hey, mom, we just went to this prayer conference and we had to draw a family tree and then write down the sins that so easily beset our family. Mm -hmm. And what are those patterns that we would want to break? And then take a highlighter. And if your parents did the hard work of breaking the cycle of dysfunction, Mm -hmm. you know, put a highlight on that sin because it's been moved from darkness to light. And he called Mm -hmm. the strong football player. He's sobbing. He's like, mom and dad, it was like a Christmas tree. It lit up. And you have done so much to move our family from darkness to light, from dysfunction Mm -hmm. to health, from toxic Mm -hmm. to healthy. I just had to call and thank you for doing that because I've lived free and my kids live free because you and dad did the hard work. We were the first generation Christians in our family. I tell Mm -hmm. you, I can replay that rise up and bless you moment every year at Mother's Day. No. It was all kidding. Wow. Yeah, no kidding. I love that so much. Pam, we are almost out of time. I wish we actually had longer. I I really want to encourage our listeners to get this creative devotional experience um, because some of you probably like to color and there's all kinds of coloring pages in here. It's just very different than most other Bible studies. But Pam, can you Tell our mamas where they can get in touch with you, where they can follow you, how they can get the study. Yeah. I would love them to go to love hyphen wise, love wise. And um, there's lots of freebies there, lots of blogs, uh, lots of parenting resources. So um, I'm going to send Becky. some mommy resources and just use the friend code three and it, they'll be free for the moms. And um, so, and then anywhere that books are sold, you know, if you want it quick, you go to Amazon. If you want to save a little bit, you go to Christian book. If you want it signed by the authors, you can go to Lovewise. Oh, I love that so much, Pam. I I feel like you gave us so many practical tips in this. Um, thank you. Because I think Moms today are often confused, you know, and so remember some of these points that Pam made, you know, go back to God first. Um, Yes, surround yourself by wise women, but test what they say before God, you know, get into the book of Proverbs, stress integrity in your home. So many great principles in this simple podcast. And so we hope that you enjoyed it today and we hope that you're going to join us again next week for another episode of the Connected Mom podcast, where we'll have another guest who will help you connect more deeply with God, more empathically with your fellow moms, and more intentionally with your child. Before we completely say goodbye, Pam, would you just close us in prayer today? I would love to. Lord, thank you so much that you promise that if any of us lack wisdom, that you'll give it Mm. to us generously like that sweet cupcake with great frosting on top. So God, I pray that you would help us this this week um, as moms, as grandmoms, um, to seek you, the giver of wisdom. And I pray that you would give us wisdom when we need it and what we need for our kids, for our grandkids, for our friendships, for our marriage. Lord, thank you that Proverbs is full of practical tips, just one line instruction that we can hang our heart on and have hope. So Lord, get us into the book of Proverbs this week. Help us find a verse to hang our heart on to have that hope and help that we desperately want and need as moms. Lord, thank you that you're our creator God and you can always create a way forward in our lives. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hey, we'll see you next week for another episode, friends. Thanks for joining us today. God bless.